In this video, I do a comprehensive set of scientific tests on the Mi Watch Lite. First, I test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. Second, I'll check the heart rate accuracy. And finally, I do a step counting test. As always, I do not want to waste your time. So timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, before getting to the tests, I'd like to provide the most important background information on the Mi Watch Lite in under 30 seconds. The Mi Watch Lite has up to nine days of battery life with typical usage, has built-in GPS, is water resistant up to five atmospheres and has 11 sport modes. It has a 1.4 inch square touchscreen display. Now the sleep tracking only tracks nighttime sleep and therefore daytime sleep, dozing and naps cannot be tracked. Importantly, the Mi Watch Lite only tracks deep sleep, light sleep and time spent awake. So it cannot track REM sleep. The Mi Watch Lite is relatively cheap and I bought it for about 50 euros. However, my channel is not so much about listing features. Instead, on my channel, I try to test the accuracy of different measurements. Now, over the last few months, the Mi Watch Lite and its bigger brother, the Mi Watch, have been some of the most requested devices. I recently tested the bigger Mi Watch and today I'll test the Mi Watch Lite. In this video, I'll do a set of scientific tests. And since I'm in the unique position to test the accuracy of the sleep tracking algorithm, I want to start off with this sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Mi Watch Lite to bed for three nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device can actually measure your brain waves and muscle movements, and it's therefore ideal for measuring your sleep stages. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. Now, I couldn't find a way to export the data from the Mi Watch Lite, so I ended up manually copying the data and loading it into the programming language I use. Now, to the results I obtained, let's first have a look at the accuracy over the three individual nights, after which I will do a statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the time of night and as you can see I went to bed a little after midnight. On the vertical axis you have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the same order that are usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Mi Watch Lite. As I mentioned in the intro, the Mi Watch Lite does not track REM sleep, so I cannot check for this stage. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see that most of what was deep sleep was also marked as deep sleep by the Mi Watch Lite. However, the Mi Watch Lite also detected a lot of extra deep sleep in the last two thirds of the night that was not actually there. Looking at light sleep, which I marked here in cyan, we see that some of the light sleep I had was indeed detected by the Mi Watch Lite. However, a lot of the light sleep was actually seen as deep sleep. Looking at REM sleep, which I marked here in red, we see that what was REM sleep was mostly detected as light sleep by the Mi Watch Lite. Awake times were detected pretty accurately by the Mi Watch, with it picking up on both of the awake moments, and these were also roughly of the right duration. Detecting the moment I fell asleep was slightly delayed, as you can see here in yellow-brown, where it detected me falling asleep about 10 minutes later than I actually did. It was spot on, however, in detecting the moment I woke up. This is the next night I recorded. Again, the deep sleep I had was mostly detected as being deep sleep, but a lot of extra deep sleep was detected as well, which means that a lot of the light sleep I had was actually detected as being deep sleep by the Mi Watch Lite. REM sleep was again mostly marked as light sleep by the Mi Watch Lite. Again, we see a slight shift in it detecting me falling asleep, where the Mi Watch Lite detecting me falling asleep slightly too late. Detecting my wake up time was again spot on. Now this is the last night I want to look at, and here we see that the deep sleep detection was a bit worse, with the Mi Watch Lite missing a lot of the deep sleep at the beginning of the night, and still detecting a lot of extra deep sleep later which again means that a lot of light sleep was marked as deep sleep by the Mi Watch Lite. And now what was actually REM sleep is either light sleep or deep sleep according to the Mi Watch Lite. And for this night, detecting the sleep start was a lot better and also sleep end detection was really good. So far, the sleep tracking of the Mi Watch Lite does not really impress me. 
It does not appear to be completely random. However, it detects a lot of extra deep sleep, which was not really there. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the MiWatch Lite and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device and the MiWatch Lite predicted. Here I display those percentages for the EEG device on the left and the MiWatch Lite on the right. Again, the MiWatch Lite does not predict REM sleep, so there's no row for this. Overall, the MiWatch Lite predicts about the correct amount of light sleep, and also the wake detection is pretty good. However, there's a lot of extra deep sleep. Of course, all of this is slightly difficult to judge because there's no REM sleep. More important than these total percentages is checking if the MiWatch Lite predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time, and that's what I displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left, the sleep stages according to the MiWatch Lite. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each of the sleep stages by the MiWatch Lite. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that about 60% of what was deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep by the MiWatch Lite, and all the rest of it was predicted as being light sleep. For light sleep, we see that almost 70% of what was light sleep was correctly predicted as light sleep and the remainder was predicted as deep sleep. Interestingly, more than 80% of what was REM sleep was predicted as being light sleep by the MiWatch Lite. This means that the light sleep according to the MiWatch Lite fits better with REM sleep patterns in real life than with light sleep patterns. Since REM sleep matches 82% with light sleep according to the MiWatch and light sleep matches 69% with light sleep according to the MiWatch. Finally, awake detection was pretty good with 80% of the awake time correctly predicted as awake time. The remainder of the awake time was predicted as light sleep, which makes sense of course since this is a lighter sleep stage. Finally, I want to check if the MiWatch Lite detected me going to bed and waking up at the right time, which we already saw was a small problem based on the individual nights. On the vertical axis we have the dates of the nights I tested the MiWatch Lite, and on the horizontal axis we have the time difference between the EEG device and the MiWatch Lite for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than in reality, and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see, the Mi Watch mostly detects me waking up at the right time. However, as you can see based on these blue dots here, it does tend to see me falling asleep about 5 or 10 minutes later than I actually did. For the next set of tests, let's have a look at the heart rate accuracy of the Mi Watch Lite. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare it against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Mi Watch Lite and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap for four spinning sessions, two bike rides, and two weightlifting sessions. That way, I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's start off with the accuracy during spinning. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy during spinning. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the MiWatch Lite. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the MiWatch Lite. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the MiWatch Lite is half of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, the MiWatch Lite performed pretty well during spinning as most measurements are along the blue line. However, there are still some clusters of points away from the blue line, so let's have a look at the individual training sessions to see why this is. Here you see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the MiWatch Lite. As you can see, I took four short breaks in this spinning session where my heart rate would dip. For this first spinning session, the performance of the MiWatch Lite is pretty okay. It mostly overlaps with the measurements of the ECG chest strap, but it does show some deviations. You can see that sometimes at the beginning of a segment, it needs some time to catch up with my increase in heart rate. 
This is visible to varying degrees in three out of the five segments. Looking at this second training session here, we see something similar with a mostly good overlap, but sometimes a delay in an increase in heart rate. For this third spinning session, the overlap is already a lot better. And finally, in this fourth spinning session, we again see some issues with a delay in detecting an increase in my heart rate, especially here in the middle. So far, the heart rate accuracy is okay, but it does show some issues. Let's now take a look at cycling outside, which I recorded while commuting to and from work. If I cycle outside, there are a lot more bumps and I also tend to sweat a bit more in the sun, which might actually influence the accuracy of the MiWatch light. Let's take a look. Now this is an overview of those measurements. So a similar plot to before what we saw for spinning, but now for cycling outside. And though the deviation is a bit bigger, it's not bad. Most points are still along the blue line. Let's now take a look at the individual commutes to see what these look like. Here we see my trip to work on my bike. Again, in blue is the polar chest strap and in red is the MiWatch light. As you can see, we see similar problems to the ones we had when spinning. The agreement is mostly good, but sometimes there's a delay in detecting an increase in heart rate. On the way back, this looks similar, though it might even be slightly worse. Next, let's see how the Mi Watch Lite performed during weightlifting. Now, weightlifting is notoriously difficult for wrist-worn devices because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist, and this makes it hard for a device to actually detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. Let's take a look. This is an overview of my heart rate accuracy, similar to before, but now for weightlifting. Of course, the average heart rate is much lower during weightlifting than during cardio workouts. You can see here, while there are a lot of points along the blue line, there's also quite a few points below the blue line, meaning the MiWatch light detected a too low heart rate. This was especially true in the higher heart rate ranges. Let's check if we can find out why this is based on the individual training sessions. Here we see the first weightlifting session. Again, in blue is my heart rate according to the chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the MiWatch light. And you can see there's a pretty big disagreement between both devices. The Mi Watch is not able to pick up on the increase in heart rate that accompanies each set that I did. And we can see the same for this next training session right here, where it was able to follow my overall patterns, but not the peaks in heart rate that come with each of the sets I did. Overall, my feelings on the heart rate accuracy of the Mi Watch Lite are a bit mixed. It had some issues during spinning, where it had a delay in picking up an increase in my heart rate. The Mi Watch, which I also recently reviewed, was much better at this. However, during cycling outside, the Mi Watch Lite performed better than the Mi Watch, and I'm still not sure why this is. Overall, the performance of the Mi Watch Lite was not terrible though. The Mi Watch Lite also features a step counter. To see if this counts my steps accurately, I went out and I took exactly 8,000 steps in segments of 1,000 steps. To get an accurate step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and I took eight times exactly 1,000 steps. I alternated holding the tally counter in my left and right hand for each set of 1,000 steps, which is what the right and left labels refer to. Now these are the actual steps counted by the Mi Watch Lite. And as you can see, they were really close to the actual 1,000 steps I took for each of the eight segments. It was never more than 22 steps off. Now, just to put that into perspective, here are also the steps counted by the Mi Watch and the Honor Band 6 I wore at the same time for the first four segments. As you can see, they generally performed about equally well. Only the Honor Band 6 had a bit more deviations in the number of steps counted, but this is still very minor. Next, I tested if the Mi Watch Lite ever gives any false positive steps. With that I mean, does it count any steps when it's not supposed to count steps? Now to test this, I wore it while cycling to work and while exercising on my home trainer. That is what I will display here. On the left, I will show the results for cycling outside and on the right, the results for riding on my home trainer. Now here you can see the results for me cycling outside to work, which takes me about 20 minutes. Each row is a single time I cycle to or from work and the left column is the total amount of steps counted and on the right, I converted this to the number of steps per minute that the Mi Watch Lite counted. As you can see, it counted almost no steps while cycling. At most, it counted about three steps per minute, which is much less than while walking, which would be around 100 steps per minute. And we can see something similar for while I'm exercising on my home trainer on the top right right here, where it counted at most three steps per minute. Overall, the step counting of the Mi Watch Lite is really good. It counts the correct number of steps while walking and counts almost no steps while cycling or training on my home trainer. The only thing I still want to test is if it counts any steps while walking with the bike in my hand or while pushing a stroller. I've heard from many of my subscribers that some watches count no steps while pushing a stroller. And it might be that if the watch is in a certain orientation, for instance, perfectly horizontal, it will just count zero steps no matter what. 
Overall, I would say that the Mi Watch Lite is not bad, but also not great. The sleep tracking was good for roughly tracking when you go to bed and when you wake up, and also for tracking your awake moments. The deep sleep tracking was not great, with the Mi Watch Lite tracking way too much deep sleep. The heart rate tracking was also not terrible, but it did often show a delay in tracking an increase in my heart rate. Finally, the step counting was good with the Mi Watch Lite. It tracks the correct number of steps while walking, and it only counts a few false positive steps. So should you buy the Mi Watch Lite? Well, it would not be my first recommendation, but for the price, it's not bad. Compared to the Mi Watch, it misses a lot of features, feels much cheaper, and also has worse sleep tracking. So if you're willing to spend a bit more, I would definitely recommend the Mi Watch over the Mi Watch Lite. If you want the best sleep tracking from a watch, get a Fitbit device, like the Fitbit Charge 4, Fitbit Sense, Inspire 2, or Lux. The Withing Sleep Analyzer, which you put under your mattress, also performs reasonably well. The Whoop Strap has good heart rate tracking and also good sleep tracking. However, this is a subscription service, so much more expensive. Now, if you want a wrist-worn wearable that tracks your heart rate and SpO2 accurately under all circumstances, then you should get an Apple Watch. Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the watch for a limited number of days and just on me, and it will be interesting to see how it performs on others. Also, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to test the watch against a full scientific polysomnography setup. We actually assembled a polysomnography device using OpenBCI components, and we're now working on getting the software functional. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. And also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.